Hi, Lee Phillips. I want to talk to you about single trusts versus joint trusts in a married couple. Now, here's the issue. I can set up a trust for him and I can set up a trust for her and I'll assume this is a standard married couple, him and hers. Uh, could be uh, two individuals, whatever. But I've got a trust that is one piece of paper for one person and I've got a second piece of paper, which is a single piece of paper, for the other spouse. Now, I could also have a trust, which is one document and talks about him and her and what happens after one of the spouses dies. That's called a joint trust. Is it better to have the two single documents or is it better to have the joint document that addresses uh, what happens when one dies and after one dies and then the second one dies? The answer is it's about six of one and a half dozen of another's. I don't know. Uh, a lot of attorneys seem to do the joint trust and it's somewhat, I'm going to say, cultural. Uh, certain parts of the country have separate trusts and certain parts of the country seem to have joint trusts is what they call them. There are a couple of issues with them. Uh, the single trusts are a little easier to manage after the individual dies. Uh, we can take his trust and it, we do what it says in his trust. If it's a joint trust after one individual dies, then we have all of the baggage in that trust of talking about both spouses. But it talks about what happens after one spouse dies and, and how it's split up or how it's continued on without splitting up. There are lots of, uh, lots of languages in it, so it, it's really not too big of a deal. One issue is if I have a joint trust, it is easier for me to divide it up for estate tax purposes after the first spouse dies. Uh, if I have separate trusts, then it's up to me during lifetime to balance the values in each one of those trusts so that when one spouse dies, about half the estate is in that trust and it goes off and becomes an irrevocable trust for estate tax purposes. It could come over and just all come into the surviving trusts, uh, surviving spouses' trust, uh, so they would would join. But then, when the surviving spouse dies, the entire estate is subject to the estate tax. You may not be worried about that anymore because the estate tax limits are relatively high. Uh, Trumpy raised it to basically 11.2 million. So. If I do it properly, I can get 11.2 million for him, 11.2 million for her, so I can get what 22.4 million out to the family. Now that is scheduled in 2025 to sunset back to the 2017 or 16 rate, uh, 17 rate of 5 million 600 thousand. That's still a chunk, and a lot of people just don't worry about federal estate taxes. You might be in a state that has state estate taxes, and, and this tax issue is another YouTube, but uh, you, we, we may, for some reason, have to split it. It's easier to split the joint trust, because all the assets are held together and I can make the split in the two separate pieces of paper during your lifetime you have to balance them out. Now, an advantage of the two pieces of paper is I got him and I got her. If I'm in a non-community property state, what we call a common law state, then these assets in this trust are not exposed if this spouse has a accident or it gets in trouble or whatever. We've separated the estate legally into two pieces. 
and there's got to be a causal connection. That's another YouTube. Got to be a causal connection in order to draw this spouse in if this spouse has a problem. If I can break the causal connections, then all of this spouse's assets are not exposed when this spouse gets in trouble. Pretty cool, huh? So I can get an asset protection value out of the two pieces of paper that I can't get out of the joint trust. Now I can create a trust that has a joint part, a his part, and her part, and it's all one piece of paper. Then I can get this, this split the estate stuff. It's a little cleaner, looks a little better. If I've actually got a piece of paper for this trust and a different piece of paper for this trust the uh, separate trusts. Joint trust can do it, but it doesn't quite look as good because there's just one piece of paper. If I'm really separating, then why aren't there two pieces of paper? Well, there are two pieces of paper. It's just all one piece of paper. There are two, it says two things. So six of one, half dozen of another. I don't know whether you want a joint trust or you want the individual trusts for one spouse, the other spouse. This is Lee Phillips talking about joint trusts versus single trusts.